So today, we've had some leaks regarding the up-and-coming Apple Silicon Macintoshes. Um, I want to do a brief recap of my history with the Apple Macintosh notebook lineup. So, my very first Mac was an iBook G3 in terms of what I had experience with. Not not what I owned, okay? What I had experience with was an iBook G3. Now, I didn't actually use it because um, at the time we didn't know how the magnification worked, so my, my classmate used it and I just watched them and, you know, tried to take in whatever lesson it was we were learning. I don't even remember. I think it was something in biology. Anyway, um, so this is the very first iBook that I actually um, utilized, per se, and to be honest, I wish I owned it. I mean, l look at this design. It is just gorgeous. You know? It is just gorgeous, gorgeous design, and I do not think that anything will ever top it. Now, I've seen some of uh, other videos on YouTube, and one thing that seems to be a common problem with these is a crack in the LCD screen so I can understand or in the bezel of the LCD screen so I can I can see why they no longer utilize this overall design but still it'd be nice to have something retro like this um, later on as I continued through my high school journey and I went into uh, graphic design my uh, instructor got their hands on a 17 inch PowerBook G4 I will never forget the introductory video. Um, if you if you search 17-inch PowerBook G4 introduction, you can see it. Um, a lot of firsts, first 17-inch notebook, first backlit keyboard. Um, my instructor had one, and also one of my one of my school um, one of my uh, fellow students had one. I personally never owned one because of the asking price. And the asking price on this thing was rather steep at around $3,200. However, the very first notebook I did own was the iBook G4, and I managed to get a good three or four years out of it. Um, fast forward ahead, and I decided to keep going with the Mac notebooks because I was really, I was loving them. I was loving the battery life. I was loving the um, the security, the simplicity. Now, keep in mind, the iBook G4 ran PowerPC. This was before the Intel switch. Um, my very first notebook with an Intel chip was the white, was a white 2008 MacBook. A couple of things that I learned about that one. Number one, um, the top case cracked rather easily. Number two, we had to get the hard drive replaced. And number three, even to this day, um, I've noticed that the um, that the optical drive, before I stopped using it, had some issues where you could literally feel the bottom of the case um, as the as the drive was being ejected, as the drive the drive was being it was accepting the disc, and that's that, that's not right. I've still got the system somewhere. If I could see about booting it up someday, I might do a retro review. From there, I went to the MacBook Air. And the MacBook Air was honestly one of my favorite notebooks. And the reason was because of the lightweight. Before then, I hadn't even touched anything as lightweight as that. I just loved how incredibly lightweight it was. I loved just... This, this system went everywhere with me. It went to class, it went to my summer house. It was just fantastic. Now what's interesting about this is that Apple supposedly is gonna be bringing back the MacBook name. Not the MacBook Air, not the MacBook Pro, but the MacBook. Now, in 2015, they did try bringing back the MacBook, and it was a total flop. And the problem was they used Intel chips that um, underperformed, they had to because of how thin the thing was. The butterfly keyboard that everybody seemed to hate, and as I understand it, the webcam, the webcam was just bad. Now, 
I mean, how do we know all this? Well, we know all this because of a leak that was presented by um, by somebody I've never heard of by the name of Hack2, iHack2 Pro. Uh, this is a screenshot taken from the Apple Insider app. And for those of you who cannot see, it reads, um, Apple Special Events, September 8th, online. iPhone, Apple Watch, etc., etc. Now, um, the reason I say etc., etc. is because this video is primarily focusing on the Mac. So I'm going to fast forward to October 27th. The Apple Silicon Max, it specifically highlights the MacBook and the MacBook Pro 13-inch, not the MacBook Air. So the way I look at it are two possibilities. Either they are going to rename the MacBook Air the MacBook, or we're going to see an all-new system. And I'm hoping it's going to be an all-new system because it's time for a design change. And it would also um, it would also uh, lend um, evidence to the rumor that we've been hearing. Apparently, in iOS 14's code, there is a reference to a Pearl camera, and the Pearl camera has been used for Face ID, as in the Face ID you use on your iPhone and iPad could very well be coming to the Mac. I'm hoping it's one of the first two Macintoshes. I wouldn't be disappointed if it's not, but at the same time, it'd really be nice to have Face ID on a Mac, especially considering they were able to get Face ID on the iPhone XR and charge under $1,000 for it, which means it is possible. It is very possible. I am very much looking forward to this. But um, I would like to know what your thoughts are about this whole business. Do you think that uh, Apple's going to redesign the MacBook? Do you think they're going to um, rename the MacBook Air? Do you think we might be seeing Face ID this early? What do you think? Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome and have a nice day.